Good morning. Welcome to worship. May God's grace be with you today as we lift up our praise and we worship the one who has given us all for which we should be thankful in every circumstance. As we continue to focus on thankfulness and because we all have so much to be thankful for, I ask that you turn to someone close by and tell them another thing this week that you are thankful for. And now, if you'll please join me in our church prayer. Christ, make us your hands by the way we serve our neighbor with authentic compassion. And make us your family by the way we love one another with unconditional grace. Amen. Now come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Amen. Please stand if you're able. One, two, three, four. I'm trading. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. Joy's gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I am blessed beyond the curse for his promise will endure that his joy is going to be my strength though the sorrow may last for the night his joy comes with the morning la 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 Sure. 
church. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for allowing us to trade our sorrows for your grace and mercy and joy. God, if we are to look back at the times that we've had throughout the years of trusting you, failing you, falling down at our knees and begging you for forgiveness and help, let us look where we are right now, God, where we are giving it over all to you. God, fill in every crack and crevice of our life and let us hand it all over to you. You should have always been in control, but today we hand it over again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
This next song we've done maybe once or twice, but I just want to talk a little bit about the song. Uh, just pay attention to the lyrics, the words, uh, just about how so much of science nowadays is trying to to disprove that there's a God, that there could possibly be a God. And I, I believe that God is the great scientist, is the almighty chemist, ruler of this world who created everything in motion. While we're spinning on this rock, spinning around a sun, spinning around a Milky Way in an ever-expanding universe, all inside the palm of God's hand. And yet he's here, right here with us never too big, never too small for anything. And so this song is a perfect representation of everything that I love science and I love learning about these things. And it, it just warms my heart that somebody put it into a worship song for me to feel that closeness to God. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so alive. I can see your heart in everything you made. Every burning star a signifying our grace. If creation sings your praise, so will I. God of your promise. You don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. Oh, 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 oh as you speak, a Catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you say. If it all reveals your nature, so alive. I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky and canvas of your If the 
salvation you chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride on a hill you created the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die and as you speak hundred billion failures disappear where you lost your life so I could find it here if you left the grave behind you so alive I can see your heart and everything you've done every part Design in a work of our call love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways. Every precious child of one you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Amen. Please have a seat. Good morning again. This morning our call to worship is not scripture, but words from a hymn that are found in our hymnal. Um, I thought these words of this hymn, I thought of them as I was preparing for today's service. And so as we approach Thanksgiving Day this week, I thought that they were a good reminder of what we should give thanks for. So please join me as we speak the words of the hymn what gift can we bring? Which is um, also found in your hymnal on page 87, but we're not singing it. We're just going to say verses two through four. Give thanks for the past, for those who had vision, who planted and watered so dreams could come true. Give thanks for the now, for study, for worship, for mission that bids us turn prayer into deed. Give thanks for tomorrow, full of surprises, for knowing whatever tomorrow may bring. The word is our promise, always forever. We rest in God's keeping and live in God's love. This gift we now bring, this present, this token, these words can convey it with joy of this day. When grateful we come, remembering, rejoicing, this song we now offer in honor and praise. Our memory verse this week is, it comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Not very long verses, I promise. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Let us say that together. Rejoice always, Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And if there are any children that would like to come forward this morning, I want to have just a real short little conversation. Jace, you're invited to come up too if you'd like. <laughs> Oh, come 
on. No? Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to come up? Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, so what's coming up on Thursday? Hmm. Thanksgiving. 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 What are you thankful for? Probably my parents. <laughs> Just your parents? Yeah. yeah, your whole family. So what does what do you think it means to be thankful? To appreciate. How can we be thankful? for more than just our parents or having our own space at home or um, being, being able to be educated or to do drama, to do madrigals and to play your instruments. You play the drums, right? So how can you be thankful for more than all of that? So who, who should we thank for all of that? Okay, there we go. Um, so if we thank God for everything, everything, that's about 100 billion things, isn't it? Yeah, just like what we sing about. So when we're thankful, we have to really feel that in our hearts, right? It, it's a deep feeling and it's not just the surface things that we're thankful for right we're thankful for this world we're thankful for everything that's in it all the animals the creatures the trees all of nature and so to give thanks not just on thanksgiving but to give thanks every single day is what god really wants us to do right yeah so let's do that right now, shall we? Okay. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for creating each of us. We give you thanks for this world, for all the life that, with, that is within it, for the beautiful trees, the beautiful sky. We thank you for the sun and the stars. And just as we sang a little while ago, that no matter no matter what you have created, Lord, it was created to worship you. And we were created to worship you. And so we thank you and we worship you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've given, for all that you continue to give, for each and every little blessing in our life. We pray this in your blessed name. Amen. Thanks for coming up, Jesus. As we move into our time of prayer this morning, I want to remind you that if you or someone that you know is in need of prayer, there are the prayer cards available in the pews that can be completed. And those, once they're completed, they can be handed off to me, a member of the praise team, or uh, placed in the offering plate a little bit later. Um, and now as we join together and go before the throne, relax. Breathe in a feeling of serenity. Exhale any stress or worry that is within you. Breathe in again, and as you breathe in, may the peace of the Holy Spirit be breathed inside, and as you exhale, allow the Spirit to center you, to set your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. This morning, Father, we come to you humbled with thankfulness in our hearts as we acknowledge and thank you for blessing us with your faithfulness. Your love and grace are so amazing, and your mercy and your faithfulness are unending. We're so very thankful to you for our families and friends, for, for what you have taught us, what you have done in our lives. 
We thank you for scripture that reminds us that we have a connection with you. And we should not have a heart of fear, but a, fear, but a heart of faithfulness and gratitude. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave his life for ours. We pray for our country, its leaders at all levels of the government. We pray for the world and especially for the Holy Land, for those that are caught up in this war, in this unrest that is going on. We pray for the many lives that have been lost, for those that are living in fear, and for those that have been displaced. We pray that you will put an end to it all, to all this turmoil. But even if you don't, we know that you are still in control. We know that you are still doing great things in the midst of all the strife and the fighting. Father, we pray for our church and for this community. We pray for the universal church as well. We pray for those who do not know you, for those that don't have that relationship with you. We pray their hearts will be opened to you, that they will turn and find a way to you. We pray for all of the shut-ins, for those that are unable to be with us this morning as we worship together, for, for those that are watching online, for those that are in hospitals or care facilities. We pray for our families and friends, for those on our hearts and minds those that are on the prayer list. We pray for those that are struggling this morning, for those that are suffering with ongoing illnesses or chronic conditions, for those with cancer or Alzheimer's or any other deliberating disease or illness. We pray for cures. We pray for healing. We pray that each and every person may know the power of your healing touch, of the mercy that is found within your compassion. We pray for those who are grieving this day. Lord, we ask that your presence be with each of them, that you will wrap them in your holy, comforting arms and give them peace. And, can, and consolation, knowing that they are in your presence, that you are with them and that you will always be there for them, no matter what they go through. We pray for those that are facing hard decisions that are before them, that you will guide them to make the right choice. And Father, we pray for those things that are unspoken, for those needs of your children and your church. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Hear the cries of our hearts, O oh Lord. As we come to you now in a moment of silence, hear us. Now hear us once more, O oh Lord, as we lift our voices together in prayer, that, that same prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 today, starting with verse 1 through verse 28. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Now, we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. It is so hard to believe that it is Thanksgiving week already. Don't you agree? It just seems like yesterday it was Easter. <laughs> and as we approach Thanksgiving... I think we need to understand a little bit more about, about Thanksgiving, about what that means before we get too deep into the message that I've prepared. You see, Thanksgiving might be a once-a-year holiday celebration, but 
Thanksgiving for a Christian is entirely different. True thanksgiving is the opposite of having an ungrateful heart or an attitude of gratitude, as we talked about a couple weeks ago. On that note, I'm going to start today's message with a question for you to think about. Are you ready? That's not the question. The question is, are you one of those people that can be thankful no matter what the circumstance you face? That's a hard one, right? Now let's be perfectly honest here. It is easy to be thankful when things are going great, right? When things are all good in our lives, it's easy to be thankful. But what about those times when things aren't so good? What about when you're in the midst of a trial or a hard time in your life? Let's think about that. There's a story of a man who was separated from his friends and colleagues, unjustly accused, and treated brutally. He was a man whose only bed was the cold, hard floor of a dank, dark, cramped prison cell. He was guarded 24-7, basically forgotten. His chains that restrained him caused anguish cutting into his wrists and ankles. He knew that the next set of footsteps that he would hear in the corridor could be those of the one who was coming to take him to his execution. Yet even with all that he was dealing with, all that he was facing, he never complained. But instead, Words of praise were always on his lips. He sang, he praised, and he was thankful to God through it all. The man in this story is better known as the Apostle Paul. Paul learned the meaning of true happiness, true contentment, even in the midst of great hardships and in such harsh conditions. Paul had been imprisoned many times, and with each time, the conditions seemed to be bad, and in most cases, worse than the time before. But even while imprisoned in those harsh conditions, Paul kept a good frame of mind, and he kept an an upright spirit. But even better, He wrote some of the best letters to the churches that he had a hand in starting. And in every single letter he wrote, he always began the letter in the opening by saying that he gave thanks to God for those that he was writing to, that he kept them in their prayers, and he thought of them often. He wrote to the Ephesians while imprisoned in Rome, and he declared to them, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. Everything. All in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then in our reading from 1 Thessalonians today in chapter 5, we find our memory verse where Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now let's think about that for a moment. Always giving thanks for everything. No matter what we may be feeling, no matter what we might be going through in the moment. You know, last week we talked about being overflowing with thankfulness. And in our message last week, I said that instead of looking at things in our lives in a negative way, we should rejoice. 
for we are children of the Most High King. We have a Savior. And we have multiple reasons to be thankful. Even if it may not feel like we do. Billy Graham once said, Thanksgiving, the giving of thanks to God for all his blessings should be one of the most distinctive marks of the believer in Jesus Christ. We must not allow a spirit of ingratitude to harden our heart and chill our relationship with God and with others. Nothing turns us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart. And nothing will do more to restore contentment and the joy of our salvation than a true spirit of thankfulness. He's a pretty smart man, don't you think? Another source that I found said, a defining characteristic of a Christian is how he or she responds to trials. By finding the good in the bad and giving thanks despite the negative circumstances, Christians set themselves apart from the rest of the world while, simultane while simultaneously lifting their own spirits by fixing their eyes on God instead of on the world. Wow. Wow. Two very strong quotes that can remind us of how we can be thankful in any circumstance that life throws our way. But it is so very hard to do just that. And it's even harder when things are getting worse instead of better, when things are going wrong in every way you turn. When our lives seem to be falling apart, when we're in pain, when we're, when we're facing some adversity or something extremely hard to decide on, when we are told that we, our spouse or a child has cancer or another disease, when we're mourning and grieving the loss of a spouse, a parent, or a child. It is in times like these that we would be more apt to wallow, to feel sorry for ourselves, to give in to cynicism or to be thankless. But instead, we always need to rejoice and pray and give thanks because this is what God calls us to do. Did you happen to catch the last part of verse 18 that I read? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will for you. It is God's will that we rejoice, that we pray, and that we give thanks to him in all circumstances. You know how there are those certain people in our lives that have had sayings that, that just kind of seem to hang around in our memories. They just kind of stick with us. And then they'll come to the surface when we least expect them. My grandma Rose was one of those people that had a lot of different sayings. And every once in a while, one will pop up in my mind. And as I was writing my message for today, I, I remembered something that she used to say. Whenever something was bad, something bad going on at school, or some, some times I was just you know, feeling like I had was down in the dumps, or something bad was just going on in, the, in, in our lives, Grandma Rose always said, it's just a storm cloud. Look for a silver lining. It made me stop and look at the situation or the problem in a new or different way. We all need to do that at times. But that doesn't mean that we always have to have a smile on our face. After all, there are those times that 
We need to grieve. There are those times when we need to be upset about what is going on in our lives. But it is also in these times that God asks us to trust in him. To give thanks to him. God doesn't want us to believe that those trials and tribulations that we go through are pointless. There is a point and a purpose for each and every trial we go through. And although we may not be able to see the good while going through them, God can. Because God can see the whole picture. No matter what you may be facing, no matter what you may be feeling, we can point our lives to God. We can place our focus on the one who can get us through it all, no matter what it may be. When we put our trust in our God, when we rejoice in God, and when we are thankful to God in every circumstance, we can find a hope. And we can gain hope in knowing that our suffering is never in vain. Whatever you may be suffering through, whatever you are facing right now in your life, it's not in vain because it is part of God's greater purpose. What we suffer through can give us courage. It can give us strength. And once we get to the other side of that, we can be a help. We can be a source of strength and encouragement to others who might be facing the same thing. However, in this world, Thankfulness and ingratitude are more common than their counterparts. But ingratitude and thanklessness are both sins. Just as immorality or stealing or lying or cheating is a sin, so is thanklessness. One of the Bible's accusations against the rebellious humanity of this world is found in Paul's letter to the Roman church, where he states, although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. We cannot have hearts that are indifferent to God's mercy and love. Christians cannot forget how truly dependent we are on God for everything. And yes, it is much easier to be thankful when things are going good in our lives. Things are great with our families. Everyone is healthy and happy. But, not, but life is not all roses, rainbows, and unicorns. <coughs> Unlike what some preachers try to tell you. Real people have real problems. Christians face real trials and are even persecuted for their beliefs. It's going on in the Holy Land right now. Paul was persecuted for his beliefs. All of the disciples were persecuted in some way, shape, or form. Many Christians around the world continue to be persecuted and oppressed. And to quote the late, great Billy Graham one more time, he said, not one of us is exempt from any kind of trouble. Yet in the midst of those trials, we can thank God because we know that he has promised to be with us and that he will help us. We know that he can use times of suffering to draw us closer to himself. After all, 
Even James, the brother of Jesus, wrote, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. You see, the people of the church in Thessalonica were no different than us. Paul wrote this letter to encourage them, but also to remind them that no matter what they may face while awaiting the day of the Lord's return, they need to remain strong in their faith. And in his final instructions to them, he writes, encourage the disheartened and help the weak. Now, standing up here, I may not know each and every trial that you might be going through. I don't know what you might be facing in your life, what you're facing today or what you'll face tomorrow. But God does. And guess what? God loves you and is with you by way of the Holy Spirit. God sent his only son to this earth to have him take part in the biggest act of love by going through with the crucifixion, by dying on the cross, by being buried for three days and rising again for our sake, for our salvation. And I believe that 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 is probably the most important thing that we can be thankful for. Even when we feel like there's nothing else to be thankful for, we can be thankful for our salvation, for Jesus Christ. We should be thankful in all times and in all circumstances for God's love that is never ending for God's power that lives within us, for God's strength that can get us through the toughest of situations, and for God's promise to always be with us and never leave us. And that's just to name a few. Throughout Scripture, we are reminded over and over to sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, to be, to be thankful because a spirit of thanksgiving is always the mark of a joyous Christian. We should be thankful. You should be thankful. I should be thankful. We should have a spirit of thanksgiving because God has blessed us many times over. And there's more on that next week. But for this day, for this week, as we celebrate Thanksgiving this week with our family and our friends, and through the remainder of this year and for the year to come, may you always remember to rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. Why? Because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God, for the remainder, or for the reminder that no matter what we may be going through, we can always, always find something for which to be thankful. Thank you for reminding us that we do not have to try to face these things in our lives alone. For you're always with us. You're always giving us strength and courage to face each time of adversity, each illness that comes our way, each situation with a strong faith and a hope in you that can only come from a relationship with you. Father, we praise you and we thank you for you are God, our Savior. Amen.
Chaddock is celebrating 170 years of service to children and families because of supporters like you. It all began in 1853. Chaddock was founded by members of the Methodist Church as a college, which went through several name changes. In 1877, the school received its final name, Chaddock College, in honor of an Astoria, Illinois farmer, Charles Chaddock, who helped the school financially. The college was given to the deaconesses of the United Methodist Church in 1900. They established it as the Chaddock Boys School, a haven for orphans and boys from broken homes. Thanks to efforts from the school superintendent in 1912, the school moved from downtown Quincy to a farm, where our campus remains today. The decades to follow brought on changes great and small. The daily program shifted from a military curriculum to focus on life skills. New facilities were built and foster care services began. Family counseling also became a part of the Chaddock model. It was in 1983 that Chaddock Boys School became Chaddock and girls were admitted into the programs. In the late 1990s, Chaddock therapists began studying the emerging research on trauma and its impact on the physical and emotional development of children. To help children overcome the pain of abusive pasts, the Developmental Trauma and Attachment Program formally launched in 2002. Just as Chaddock's success with children expanded, so did the campus and its reputation. A building was purchased for foster and adoption services, a new on-campus school opened its doors, and the old school was transformed into the Knowledge Center at Chaddock. Chaddock continues to have a global impact among mental health professionals. Our staff has published two books and numerous articles in scholarly journals. Thousands of mental health professionals engage with Chaddock's podcasts and social media content every week. Though 170 years have passed, Chaddock remains a faith-based agency dedicated to helping children and families in new and innovative ways. Every child receives individualized care to meet them where they are. We walk with every family on their healing journey. We're amazed at the support we receive daily from churches, businesses, foundations, and individuals who want to see our mission continue. Here's to the next 170 years and the shared belief that every child deserves a chance. God has given each and every one of us so much. So let us now take a moment and give a portion of those blessings back to God and to the church to help support our church, our missions, our ministries. Offering plates will be passed as, you, um, as we sing our final hymn, but, we, but you can also text to give if you have not already set up to do that. The special offering for this month is Chaddock and it can be placed in the plate at the back of the sanctuary. And so now I want to bless our offering, and I invite you to stand. There are no limits to the gifts you have given us, gracious Lord. Now we return thanks to you for these gifts, that we bring these tokens to you, asking for your blessing <laughs> on givers and gifts. Help these gifts and givers to be your witness throughout this world. Amen.
Okay, several announcements, so bear with me. <laughs> For those that may be interested, I am leading a five-week Advent uh, Bible study called The Advent of Christ. It will begin on Wednesday, November 29th from 1 to 2 in the afternoon. Um, bring your Bible, a pen, and even a friend, and I will provide the rest. Sunday, December 3rd is the men's chili luncheon from 10 to 1. Meals are available for carryout, or you can eat in the fellowship hall. Um, I am also looking for those that would like to do the Sunday morning Advent readings for the lightings of the candles, Advent candles. The first Sunday of Advent is December 3rd, so um, if you're interested, please let me know, call the office, or um, I'm not sure if the form is back there on the table or not, but if it is, write in where you would like to um, do that. Uh, please be sure to put your information on your attendance pads in your pew. Um, and then after the service, even check in at the welcome station because there's a clipboard there with names on there of information that we still need for certain people. So check to see if your name's on that list. Um, also, Chaddock gifts are still available on the tree to be purchased. All Chaddock gifts need to be brought to the church unwrapped and put in the chapel by December 3rd. Is there anything else? that I'm forgetting. Um, oh, if anybody's interested in walking in the Christmas parade on December 3rd, let me or Cassie know. Um, and I think that's it. So here now, receive this blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Be a blessing to others, and you will be blessed. Amen.